Hello friends, it's Simone. Welcome to another snippets from my desk episode, video, whatever you want to call it. Hang out with me. Um, it's Sunday, May 5th, 2024, and I am hanging out with you and catching up on my reading log, as I always do first thing when I start those videos. Just to get it over with. <laughs> um, last week I logged two of the did not finishes. And I'm not sure if I'm going to revisit those. This week I finished one and I already mentioned it in my last video. Um, it is called The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. It's a fantasy novel and it is an interesting take on um, Sherlock Holmes, basically, or that's how it was compared on the Currently Reading podcast and I couldn't agree more. It's, I really loved it. I didn't think I would love it as much as I did. Oh, let me check. The number 22. Um, and yes, I am writing with a fountain pen. The Tainted Robert Jackson. Bennett and currently reading. So, what um, did I love about this? Often when you, or when I get to fantasy novels, there's a lot of dry world building happening. And that, interestingly enough, did not happen with this novel. You were thrown right in. The only thing that is... Um, being listed in the front before you even start the book is the ranks of the military. <clears throat> Which, of course, especially when you're an, listening to the audiobook, it's impossible to reference that later on when it might be interesting. So I just, I didn't even pay attention to that. Um and then it dives right in and you are introduced to this world and there's not much explanation happening. You just go along with it and find out what happens. And I really enjoyed that. I don't, I still don't really know much about this world. I think I know it's called Khanum, maybe with an R, maybe not. Um, there is different territories. Some have <clears throat> been destroyed. There are leviathans, which are big sea creatures that seem to attack uh, the territories that are at the ocean. For some reason, I when I l depicted Carnum in my head, I always saw um, the boot of Italy. Um and I finished the book maybe on Monday or maybe on Tuesday. I think I finished it on Monday. And ever since then, it's it's starting to subside. But ever since then, I had all of those names in my head. Ayudex, Taligray. And it's... It was a really interesting world to get to know and understand through the eyes of Watson, um, who is Din Cole, and um, to get to know the Sherlock Holmes in that novel, who is a, a female character, displayed by a female character. And I, I really, I really enjoyed 
getting to know about the world without being overwhelmed by too much information that I don't need at this point in time. The book ends with the the case that they are work they worked on is closed but it definitely ends with the option of um being continued and i do think that there is plans to continue this series and i really cannot wait for the second book i want to learn more about this whole whole world so what can i write fantasy oh <laughs> In, maybe I should look it up. I'm going to write Karnam. Karnam. All right, that's all I want to write about this book. Um, I received A Gentleman in Moscow back, started listening to that. I don't think I wrote it down here anywhere. I think it was right around here, 16, 17 ish. Um, and I got it back. The interesting thing is when it comes back to you, it just shows you how far along you were the last time that you borrowed it from the library. And I'm on 69% of the book. I think I'm going back to 50% to just get back into the story um, because you need to pay attention a bit, quite a bit. Um, I took a long time to get into A Gentleman in Moscow, and I think that's around the time when I realized that diving into the next book right after another might not be the best for my to, to get into the new book, and that's why I haven't actually even started another book after I listened to The Tainted Cup, because I just, all of those names and places kept ruminating in my head, and I knew that it just wouldn't work out for me to, to go into the next book. And so when that happens, I just listen to some podcasts that have accumulated in my podcast app. I listened to the latest ep episode of Tokyo Inklings, the podcast by C.Y. and <laughs> Jacob. And... Um, if you, I love how detail oriented and background oriented Jacob is when he does research on pens and pen manufacturers and stuff like that. And it was a really great listen. So if you need some in between time between things to listen to and you haven't listened to the Tokyo Inklings podcast in a while, this episode I can highly, highly recommend. I have another update on reading stuff. I did not know that I mentioned a website as a recommendation for authors that you like, that you would like to get uh, updates and news on when they publish new books, uh, which is called Fantastic Fiction. And I found out this week that they actually send an email when a new book is announced by an author that you are following. So you can actually be, you, you don't have to go on the website to check, oh, what what new books are coming out. You will be, be notified for all the new books after you started following them. Of course, uh, for me, I just started using that site. And so there are books that I haven't read by authors because I read one book of theirs maybe two or three years ago and they already published more. So those you will not be notified about. But everything else after you start following that is announced will be sent via email. And I thought that was super fantastic. So then you could just go and um, place a hold in your Libby app for that. Or at least um, you can get notified in your Libby app once the library that you are a member of adds that book to their um to their collection and then you can place a hold so new stuff i don't want to do new stuff too often i think 
May is going to be a little hefty. I'm waiting for two more things to come. And no, three. Yeah. Three more things to come. And then I should be good. I have decided to do something really challenging. Maybe I'll talk about this next week. I need to let it settle a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I no, I'm gonna talk about it today because I am I'm I'm already committed. Um so I have three more things coming. One of them is probably the um the perfect nibs. The holy grail nibs that I never thought I would find in Lamy gold nibs. But I think I did. So I want to... I had quite a few pens and inks and stuff coming in these first five months of the year. And... Even though I am using the things that I received, I do think I need to learn more about all of the things. Uh, one pen that comes to mind immediately is the Scribble Feel that I got as a birthday pen in February. Um, I need to get to know this pen more. I need to investigate more. Is this an amazing pen? Is it do I love it enough to keep it? Um, basically, all of the pens that I have received since January 2024, or actually even even the, the Pelican M800 that I got for Christmas, um, I need to use those more. I need to explore those more with more inks and just find out what exactly I love about them. If those pens are worth worthy to be in my collection, or if they need to be passed along to someone else who will enjoy them more. I'm not saying that I don't like any of the ones that I have, but I just want to be sure, you know, like sure, sure that they deserve a spot in my pen case. And so, and... So the other thing is that my phone and my watch both are starting to crap out on me big time. So my phone makes it to about 2 p.m. in the afternoon before it tells me that it's at 10%. And then five minutes later, it's sh it shuts down. And my watch makes it to about 5 p.m. And then it says, oh, I'm at 10%. You need to charge me really soon. Um. So those are two big investments that I have coming up in the future. And I want to use my crafting budget to replace those. Because let's be real, the phone is only crappy because I'm using it for filming my videos. Um, so that's what's happening. Um, I also want to use my crafting budget, my funds that I'm accumulating for my trip to the San Francisco Pen Show. And yes, there is a lot of temptation coming up. There's Independence Day sale. There's the San Francisco Pen Show. There is definitely Fountain Pen Day. Maybe the Sailor Don't Miss the Boat sale in September. There is Black Friday that's in November. That's basically so far away that what I don't even know what's going to happen before then. But my intention is to stay firm. I have goals that I'm saving the money for. So it's not just lingering, you know, uh, I, I have. And then I want to take classes, at least one class if it's offered in San Francisco. And if I'm really honest about my fountain pen purchases from the San Francisco Pen Show 2022 as well as 2023. I wasn't really that successful. Um, I thought I wanted those things and I did research before. So maybe it was just the development that happened. But I think 
I need to not buy fountain pens at the San Francisco Pen Show. Ooh. I want to have one or two nib appointments, depending on how this goes now from, from now to August, how I feel about all the pens that I have. Um, and so I definitely want to get one nib ground to a specific grind. Maybe I want to get one or two pens tuned. So that is there. I'm not going to not purchase anything. I think that's totally unrealistic, but maybe I'll focus on one or two ink bottles. Maybe I'll, I'll buy some stickers or things that support the other uh, vendors that are there. But my main, main goal is to go to a class on nib tuning, um, see friends and just hang out there get get my fountain pen community fill the real life fountain pen community fill for the next year until i get back to the desert where there is no people who have who seem to have fountain pens um so yeah so that's what i'm planning on doing and i'm kind of scared because i'm not really good at these but also it sounds very very fun if i can pull it off and even if so i'm not saying that i'm not ever buying a pen but i want to hold off until 2025 with exploring any more i think most of my friends that i will see at the san francisco pen show have the pens that i would love to try like for instance the Waterman Serenity, not Serenity, the Waterman, what's it called, with the inlaid nib. People say that it's so fantastic, and it might be. And even if I fall in love with the writing experience when I try one, I can still wait until 2025, she says now. We'll see how that goes, but I that's that's what I want to do and now I want to show you what I got in <laughs> there is two more pens coming three more nibs and then and then that's it so this I purchased as a an everyday carry pen I showed you last week and I thought I was going to be able to hold off but I didn't I showed you the um where are they right here the uh, Prep, Platinum Preppy in Extra Fine and the Pilot Kakuno in Extra Fine. The Preppy is great. Oh, there's even some ink in the, in the cap, so not sure why that happened. But it's great. It works well. And actually, this closes now. Why? Why is this closing now and it was so wobbly last week? I don't know. Okay. Um... So this works well. This one, I noticed that um, because probably there is holes in the cap, it has hard starts when I start writing with it, but then it flows well. So it's not drying out completely, but it does have hard starts. And I just, <clears throat> I just thought I needed this and I had... So this is what I'm what what this is is the platinum three seven seven six century in burgundy with an extra fine nib, and when I received this, it took me definitely two or three days to get used to this. I got this on Thursday. Today is Sunday. You saw I have been writing with this in my notebook because the first time I used it, I was like, okay, nah. What did I think? The second time I used it, I thought, hmm, maybe I'll get used to this. And now I feel like I'm reaching for it all the time. I did my journal entry uh, for this, not for this week. This is this week. This is the week prior. Did it with the, with the Platinum 3776 and it's an amazing writing experience. So... <sighs> At first I thought maybe it's not holding up to my expectations, but I just needed to warm up to it and now it's amazing. I might get this um, 
made a little bit wetter. Not sure. I have a lot of time to get used to this, but but I love it. I can even write in my planner in the monthly, which I don't usually, I'm usually not able to. So this is other ink, other pens, but here I can actually do this, which, wow, I didn't think I would be able to. So yes. This is definitely a great thing. I'm glad I didn't get the ultra extra fine because I think that would have been way too fine. Uh, I was afraid that I did the wrong, made the wrong choice with the extra fine, but I think it's perfect. I also wrote my my outline with it, and yeah, it's great. I usually don't write small, but with this pen, I can write small without feeling cramped into a space and that's exactly what I want and then I bought stuff from Goulet pens maybe I can put this to the side um, they on their last podcast pencast they announced these stickers I think this one is a little bit older not sure but I really like this I have a friend who loves tea so I'm gonna send I bought two of each so I'm going to send her this. Claudia, if you're watching, don't buy it. And then I also bought two of this because Karina loves the Lamy 2000. And so I bought one for myself and one to send on. Um, and the reason why I bought these stickers is because I purchased some silicone grease. And I think they talked about the stickers and the silicone grease in this in the past uh, pencast, not the one from uh, May 3rd, but the one from April 26. Um, and they talked about uh, piston fillers and they specifically talked about the Pelican piston pens where the dude, the dude, the person asking the question asked, if it was normal that the piston would be so hard to turn and uh, Pelican only offered them to a replacement, which was like 200 bucks. And if they had an idea on what to do uh, in order to not have to purchase a new whole, I think, body, I don't know. I didn't follow it that all that well, but they talked about using the silicone grease and going in through the nib part and just uh, putting some grease around where the piston rod goes up and down. And that should help make it much easier to turn. And the reason why I needed this now or I wanted this now is because my Pelican piston is so hard to turn. And I think that's my own fault. Um, I used it in an ultrasonic cleaner and I think ultrasonic cleaners take away the grease. This is just theorizing. I'm not 100% sure. I will find out if it goes if it's easier to use then. But that's why I got this. I have heard from several sources that the Twisby grease is not the best to use for that specific purpose and so I decided since I wanted the stickers and the grease it was it would be justified to get that now especially because um, I want to use the pen and see if it is better and then my friend Lori used this washi tape on one of the letters that she sent me and I just don't know why I love this whimsical style of uh, washi tape. And so I went on the hunt and bought three of this specific artist. Uh, the artist's name is Orange Studio and I bought them at Paper Game. <sighs> this one, I, uh, I got a little teeny tiny sample of this. I don't know if I got it from Lori as well or if this was given to me by another uh, pen pal. 
but you know I love stamps and I love flowers and so this is totally up my alley <clears throat> and of course nobody needs a full roll of this but I just couldn't help myself I don't maybe I have more time now so in the beginning of the year I purchased stuff because I didn't have a lot of time to play with my things because of the puppy now I have more time and now I feel like I deserve this to to play which comes full circle I just need to stop and not buy stuff and then I don't have reasons why I need to buy and then this one is also journaling stationery related which I think might go really well in my journal I don't know or I'll just stick it on letters that I write and cut stuff off and send to friends but I just love that whimsical style and I talked about this in one of my recent videos where I said I don't I love the meatball washi tapes but I feel like they're so odd that I don't really use them much in in my planners I don't really know how to and let me show the you the irony of that statement because I started decorating or putting stuff into my journal for this week because I wanted to salvage these you know they come on the packaging of the washi tape so I stuck them here. This is meatball washi tape to commemorate other washi tape. This is meatball washi tape because it rained all day yesterday. So what I'm trying, what I'm going to try and do is pull out more meatball and decorate the whole week with it. I did. So this is one of the this is one of the stamps from here, or stickers, washi samples from here. Uh, I purchased the washi and not the PET tape. But this sample that I received from a friend is PET. But um, it was warm all week long, super spring-like. It smelled amazingly outside. And so I thought this would be an, a great sticker thing, embellishment to go here. And then it snowed yesterday. Yep, May 4th, and it snows. And then I usually use a sticky note to put this here. But yesterday I worked on this spread, and I found that I put Obnoxious Puppy. I usually use those things as titles. And then I just wrote, not about the Obnoxious Puppy, but this is the problem when backfilling your journal spreads, is that you don't even know why you put it. Put this here and uh, so I really want to try and stay current as much as possible moving forward I was really great I was fully caught up before this week look at this and yeah so I started using instead of using my Twisby mini with the reverse architect that I used for titles a long time here. Where? Where can I find something that is like here? Um, and I used it in the beginning quite a lot, I think, right here, 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 here. Um, so basically, I just used this pen and stickers and I started when did I start so in February I started using my one of my inked pens uh, to use as titles and I really liked how that turned out so I did it again here this is maybe not the prettiest one but it's it's there this one I don't like at all so I I tried to use one of my pens as the journaling pen and I don't like that so I I like using the color as a highlight in a title or something and here I wrote the back of this on the side with one of my ink pens that I liked too but this is more how I enjoy using my colored color inked pens uh, with 
black writing and then the highlight is the title and I did try to do it here but for some reason it didn't work out so that it would be super cohesive did it here which I really liked and so I I think moving forward that's what I'm going to do and so I don't technically need or need this as my journaling pen right now I, I probably will switch it up as I go along I don't want to follow the same recipe all the time because then it gets boring but so now I this week yesterday when I worked on this I used my platinum 3776 and it was just perfect um what I like in comparison is I'm so sick of continually screwing on the back and it's too short in my, well, yeah, no, not in my opinion. It's just too short to use without it posted. And so I always have to unscrew, screw on, unscrew, screw on. And I'm just so sick of this. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying this now. It is technically also too short. I post it, but you know just the different movements here it's just so much faster and I really like the red so that's where I'm currently at I love the um I love this and I'm just going to continue doing the same thing here I started using this uh, pit artist pen in B I don't even know if this is supposed to be a brush or if this is supposed to be broad. It it feels like I've already used it and broken the tip a little bit. Um, but I'm just, it, it works for now and I'm just going to keep using it. But I think when once this is done, I'll definitely replace this because I, I love the bold black color of this. Um, so there's there's that this is my one of the last uh inked pens from april that i have left over i knew i wanted to use this uh, pelican brown here but i just didn't get to filling this in before i cleaned all of my april pens so i kept this one inked and then this is the other one that is still inked. This is the Lamy Gold Knit because it's just so fabulous. Um, I think, oh, I already cleaned the pen up from today. I'll, I'll talk about this in a second. Um, I think I wanted to clean it out today so that I have it available from my 31 inks, 31 pens, 31 letters project. Um... Yeah, these came in a letter from um, Lori, and I would really, I need to t um, message her and ask her where she got those from. If she printed them herself or where they came from there, it also says Journal 2024. They're super muted and they fit right into this theme. So I thought I was going to use them here. This basically looks like my puppy, except for my puppy has white spots right here. And then, uh, so 31 inks, 31 pens, 31 letters. I'm just, I originally, I thought I was going to put this here and just write what pen I used, what ink it is. But first of all, so many things are happening that I want to document. And I I thought in September when I did 30 inks, 30 days, um, which is right here. Um, I, I actually only, I opened it up to this one. Can you read the same thing as I do? I need to leave more space for these two words. Um, I only wrote about the ink and pen combination, how I feel about it. But I did a transcription. I did a video every day. And so I did not keep up with my weekly journal. 
then in December when I that's not it in December when I did my ink vent and I put a snippet every day right here I also didn't wasn't really able to keep up with my uh, weekly journal and I did write snippets of what happened every day in here and so I thought because basically what I'm doing in May now is the exact same thing I would also wow look at this uh, I would also write snippets of every day in here and not be able to keep up in here but so far I'm on day five this hasn't happened yet I'm writing small snippets on how I like the ink, how I like the pen, and then I still have all of these things to put here. Um, so I'm not repeating information and I don't spend a lot of time with this. I also love that I am making my own rules. So the first thing is I really, I love this washi tape. I love that it is dated. I love that it's a different illustration every single day for every day of the year. It's perfect. But I don't like the rectangular shape. So I usually cut around it. But I thought for this project, I would just use the squares. Yeah, it lasted until day two. I do not like it. So I'm cutting around it again. And I like that much better. So that's how I'm doing this moving forward. Um, today, so I already threw back, I think, an ink. No, I threw one back on the third because it was another brown from Andorillium and I didn't want to use two brown inks right after each other. Um, then I pulled another pink ink from Andorillium, which I have right here. I'm very, very glad that I am making these rules because I can do whatever I want. I can change them as often as I like. And that's exactly what I did. I pulled this one. I took a look at it, did not feel it. And I found that I actually don't feel it tomorrow either. So I just took it out. I'm passing it along. And then I pulled this one as the second pull. I inked up a pen. It started crapping out on me when I start when I wrote the you can see how full it is and then how bold it is in the beginning and then it's here and then when I wrote Twisby it I already had to retrace the letters I primed the feet pr probably here and I decided you know what I am making the rules if this is such a, a shitty experience experience right here then why am I going to make myself use this pen and ink to write a note I uninked the pen I pulled another ink I filled another pen and that's how I'm going to move forward from here on out this is my project these are my rules I'm so glad I can adjust them as I need them so that's how this is going. I have inked, so today is, look at how oh, beautiful these two colors look together. Um, the honeycomb is definitely one of my favorite uh, SD colorways. And I have this uh, nib on here that will, if you're not a Kofi, Kofi person, then you will see the video of this nib before you see these snippets, but there will be a video for this nib on my channel next Saturday um, for all the Kofi people. 
it's a zoom nib by the good blue and it's super fun it's actually making me second guess my um techo nib from esterbrook i am i think what i'm going to do is ink up that techo nib tomorrow and see how i like it compared to this and if what i'm feeling right now which is I don't like it as much as this, I will probably sell the Techo Nib. So if you're interested in it, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll make that decision tomorrow. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> so cute. I don't want to let you go, but I don't have any more to talk about. Um, I really love how this is turning out i'm glad i'm not using my 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 journal this one anymore i haven't cut it out just yet um i should be doing this i i i am really debating whether i should just um move my planner into a standard traveler's notebook i'm still hesitant but then I could use the monthlies for my dates. And then just use a plain notebook as my the rest of my planner. Because that's how I'm using my weeks right now as well. Um, yeah, I need to think about that a little bit longer. But that's where I'm at this week. I did definitely... One thing that I wanted to mention in regards to this is that I am learning as well besides the fact that I think I need to completely freeze my fountain pen acquisitions um, for the re remainder of the year to get to know my pens better I've been talking about this and then I'm just turning around and buying more so I really need to get my act together with that but um, I really enjoy doing this project but I'm also kind of over samples at the moment so what I my thought is right now on day five is to continue this project until May 31st and if I still want to continue inking pens every day until my vacation, then I'm going to go, go and use my ink bottles to figure out which ink bottles I no longer enjoy using so I can let them go. Because that's another, another thing um, that I'm definitely thinking about. I don't really need 48 ink bottles. Uh, but I'm also interested in buying some bottles where I know I love the ink, like Diamond Brandy Snap, for instance. That's a favorite of mine. I don't have the ink bottle. Um, well, I do. It's at somebody else's house right now. Um, but I don't want to block space for ink bottles that I really love that I would use over and over and over again with inks that I purchased on a whim when I didn't do enough research about it and then um, have them here never really use them not enjoying them why are they still in my collection so I I think if I want to approach the San Francisco pen show from the eye of I'm not buying pens, I'm getting nip work done, I'm participating in maybe some classes or seminars, and I'm meeting people, and maybe I'll allow myself to buy ink, then I want to know what inks I want to buy, and that I only have inks in my collection that I love, and not have back stock of ink that I don't no longer enjoy because also I could just bring them and disperse them among other people 
So that's my thought process right here. Um, I hope you are doing great. I already said that before. I really and appreciate you taking the time to listen to my rambles. Um, please <laughs> keep me in your mind thoughts. Um, approaching my huge project. I already told my husband, which is never a good idea because he will always make fun of me when I, when I, uh, struggle. But this time I'm not going to struggle. There you go. I should probably write a list of what I'm basically so that when I pr sign up for a, a class at the San Francisco Pen Show and I spend money, that is accounted for. You know, that's that is on the list of things that I'm going to buy with that money. Okay, here we go. I am going to let you go. I'm going to dive into my journal, finish my journal entry from last last week, finish my journal entry or work on my journal entry for this week. And then I'm looking forward to talking to you next week when I should have two of the outstanding packages. And I'll show you what I did. I didn't tell anyone about the the one pen that is coming. Well, I didn't tell anyone about two of the pens that are coming. The last two of 2025. 2024. Yeah. Stay realistic, Simone. Okay. I don't know how to end this video, so I'm just going to go. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.